10 millimeter holds that on and make sure it is working properly once you get it in there. Okay, we have, may have to put some grease to hold that one in there. And this retainer sits in there just like so. Two 218 thousandths plastic balls. We have our separator plate. Holds that in. Alright, let me get the next section. All right, hopefully we can get this this time. This is not the original valve body. Um, it has been, this is uh, off the core. Uh, my valve body footage got all screwed up, so hopefully this is all I'm missing. Uh, we got check ball here, 218 thousandths rubber there and there, or plastic, you can put either one. You got this check, or not check, this uh, stopper. I think they call it a, I don't know, I forget what they call a stupid thing right now. Some vibration stopper, uh, something like that. Anyway, it sits right in there. Uh, make sure that your pin is in there. You got separator plate is going to sit on here. Going the right direction. Come on, get back on there. I don't know why this is wanting to be so difficult about getting filmed. I'm having trouble with my SD cards saying they're corrupted. Uh, let's see, we've got a 218 thousandths ball that goes in here two filters they have o-rings on them sometimes you get them in the kit may have already been discussed I don't remember what's been said and what's not been said I uh, do not use valve body gaskets on my Toyotas you can use them if you want to if you are going to use them I would make sure that every stinking hole matches from your old gasket to your new one this goes on top, and let's see what we got here. We have a bolt that is one inch nine nineteen. Two bolts that are eight hundred seventeen thousandths. down here. I'm going to leave all this loose for the momentary until everything gets lined up. Just want to get it finger tight so that nothing falls out. On the front side here Got this check valve goes face down, spring sets on top. Another filter goes here. Over here we have uh, 389 thousandths steel ball. Our spring. This little retainer, this leg sits right inside of here spring sits in that pocket right there. Eight millimeter bolt holds that in. This one we can actually tighten down. <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and use an impact because this valve body is not going on anything. We 
have this vibration rattle clip, whatever they want to call the thing. And it goes in this slot right here, and it faces just like that. We have two more 218 thousandths balls. In here, we have three 218 thousandths balls. If you're not going to put your gaskets on, they go there, there, and there. This plate is going to be loose when you put these bolts back in. You do not have to have these bolts. Uh, they're just to hold the check balls in place. They have a little shoulder on them. Phillips heads. Okay, like I said, your plate is going to be loose. That is okay. This goes on top. Separator plate here. I don't think I washed this one. I think it's still got the gasket on it. So, uh, see if we can get it off of here real quick. There, plate goes on. Razor blade go. And this pipe goes up here. We have two bolts that are two inch thirty five, three that are seven hundred and twenty eight long ones go down here, the short one goes here, here and here, okay we have a bolt this bracket that goes here, it's two inch thirty. We have two bolts that are short. They are seven twenty six. One goes there, one goes there. And Let's see, we got some of these that are the same, long ones and shorter ones. I think we got six that are that length, and then the other five, maybe it's seven. Eight. Okay, eight that are eight that are one inch nine thirteen. That one holds this solenoid. Then we have three that are 
one inch 762. Alright, we can tighten these down. Make sure everything's lined up. And go ahead and tighten it down. Like I said, this is not going in a vehicle. Okay, you got 218 thousandths ball right there. Two O rings on your accumulator spring there, spring on top. This check ball is sitting in that spot right there. All three bolts are the same. They are one inch seven sixty four. This little leg is going to sit right there. Okay, we have this little deal here that diverts the fluid. All these, the rest of these bolts are the same. 575 thousandths, or somewhere there is about. Our lockup solenoid has two O-rings on it. solenoids. We have white solenoid goes on the bottom. Goes this bracket goes on top. And a red solenoid goes on top of that. goes up over that, comes around through here, loops underneath there, and that goes there, red wire goes through there, and hooks in right there. Alright, we go on to the valve body, I mean the unit. Okay. It said SD card error, so I don't know if we got any of this. So I'm going to redo it. Snap ring goes on this ring gear. 
There's a short side and a tall side. You can also see how the lip is different. The snap ring opening goes in this opening. Does not matter which one of these you put in there. It's just the snap ring ha opening has to be there. Let's pinch it together and it'll pop into place. Get a little lube on our braces. And I'll put a little lube on our bearings here. Planet goes in here, and the bearings are going to go on the back here. Okay, the bearings are going to get pressed onto there. This bearing is going to get pressed onto here. And then we'll be back. And I don't have a camera over there, so you're not going to be able to see that. Okay, there's a groove right there. There's a tab. And then the nut goes with this side, beveled side, down. We're going to tighten this down bend one of those tabs up into there okay over here is this washer you got a large tab small tab large hole small hole on your uh, race does not matter which direction it goes we have a washer Sprag with this lip goes down. I'll go ahead and put that in here first. And it goes down. And the washer. And the snap ring. And then our shaft presses in from this side. Make sure I am going correctly, yes. And then this bearing is going to sit this side down right in there. Now, and once you get the I gotta get the new sealing ring kit, but sealing ring goes together just like that. Right here. Put a little grease on here if you need to to hold that into place. Overdrive clutch. Make sure your ball is free again. Inner and outer O ring. Return spring. This is the snap ring that goes against the return spring. This is a snap ring for the pressure plate. Here again, we're going to put the opening away from the opening down here. And you just push this one into place.
alternate alternator clutches and steels on the pressure plate the flat side goes down the rounded side goes up and the bevel goes up and our snap ring and the bearing from our planet overdrive planetary goes this way onto here and we have this bearing on the back side here okay we have two ceiling rings they're the metal ones they have if you get the trans tech kit they have the red and yellow stripes on them they're hook and loop they go together just like that There's a brace, lip goes down. Our drum, make sure your bearings are on there, goes on top of that. Pressure plate goes down, rounded side down. Steel on top. Now, this thing can fit in one of two ways. And, well, I take that back. I think it's the 540. So you can put it in both ways. But it uh, is not quite right. You'll see when you get it on there. So just make sure it goes in loose like this. And then the snap ring goes in on top. Put the opening away from an opening. You can just put it in by hand again. Just make sure it is all the way back. O ring on our accumulator. your outer and inner spring in. This washer goes on top. Snap ring goes on top. Make sure that the short end of the taper is up. I'm gonna have to take pictures or take measurements of that. So I'm not gonna put that in quite at this momentary. Once you get that in, uh, the shield's gonna go up here. Gasket goes on there. These three tins hold that in. Here's our bolts for the housing. They have really narrow shoulders on them. You got, uh, what is that, six that are like that, two like that, four like that. The piston that's going to go in the back of the case. Inner and outer o-rings again they're real close to each other so make sure that you get the right one in the right spot you don't want the inner one too loose and you don't want the outer one too tight just like that one's too loose and if it's too loose both of them are too loose Okay, this one's going to be the outer one. The inner one's going to be too loose, so what you can do is you can take it and stretch it. Just give it a little, little tweak. Don't pull so hard that you snap it, but you can stretch it just a little bit to where it stays up in that groove.
Okay. Like I say, this is going to go in the back of the case and it'll be sitting on there. Somewhere, well, forget the orientation of it. I want to say that it's somewhere just like that. Right there. And I did forget to show putting this in. A ceiling ring on here on your turning torque. It's uh, 2.1, 3.4 foot pounds once you start turning. It's not the initial starting to turn, it's after it's turning. Go ahead and put that down, make sure we're all the way down. I do believe that we have talked about the bolts, but here are the bolts again. Yeah, all my bushings are going to be already pressed in because I don't have a camera at the uh, harbor press. So the bushing goes in until it bottoms out against there's a ridge inside of here. And on your bushing, I think it saved the old one. On your bushing where it's put together with the seam, do not put that. I don't know if you can see down inside there. Right down inside there is the lube hole that goes back to right here. Do not put that seam there. Uh, your seal put below flush. Your outer gear is going to go with the dot up. Inner gear is going to go with the dot down. O ring on the outside. I'm going to take this over to the Arbor Press and change this bushing here. Once this goes on, this only lines up one way. 10 millimeters go on here. The you're going to get a new washer in your kit. Uh, put the tab right there. The ceiling rings are butt cut, so they go together just like that. We're going to go there. And see, we got our o ring. I guess that's it for the pump. Let me get this pressed in and get this torqued down, and we'll be back. All right, forward clutch. Make sure this ball in here is nice and free. Got an O-ring, goes in here. And when it goes out here. This one uh, for the piston for the forward drums, 22 holes for the return spring. The directs is 18. So make sure that you get the right piston in the right drum. It takes a little short feet on this one. Snap ring, you'll notice that there's a taper to the tips. You want the narrow end, short end of the taper up. We're going to put the opening somewhere in here between these two right here. Now you're going to start with the steel, alternate clutches up to the pressure plate. The step side of the pressure plate faces up. I'm usually doing this in a hole in the table, but I got stuff in the way. Put the opening and the snap ring away from the opening, something like that. It feels good. On the back side, we got this bearing. On the front side, we got this bearing. 
You got three ceiling ring grooves right here. The ceiling ring is scarf cut. It goes together just like so. If need be, you can put some grease on these ring lands to hold your rings in. Direct clutch, make sure that your ball is free again. And your O-ring out here, O-ring in here. In your kit, you may have a couple extra O-rings. Depends on what pistons you have as to what you're gonna use. Same way with the snap ring, short end of the taper up. I'm going to put the opening in between here and away from the opening here. Put your steels in. Cutouts are going to be together. Snapping. Washer. You're going to need a lot of grease to hold this on. Okay, you can pick the uh, O-rings that fit the best on your support. You're going to get three of them. So just find the ones that are proper. Here again, if it's loose on the inner one, you can just stretch it out a little bit. And uh, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but no, I do not soak my clutches. If you feel the need to soak your clutches, then by all means soak them. All right, here's the uh, return spring, snap ring. Let's see, am I doing this right? Make sure. There's our snap ring for our center support. The bolt that comes through the case that holds this bracket on and this bracket on. This holds your band in place. This is the bolt that goes through here. And you're going to have to line this up so that that lines up in there right there. Here's our return spring. And the clutches, steels, and then the pressure plate goes with the um, with it facing down the snap ring holds the sprag in and let's see I think we're getting pretty close to being at a stopping point 
All right, here's our gear train. We have a race that goes on top here. We have a bearing and race that goes on top here. One that goes on the back side. And that's going to ride on the sun shell. There's no uh, washer here. We got our big washer that was broken on the teardown. Make sure those little tabs get in the holes. Okay, our sprag is going to sit on here this way. Going to be turning down. It's going to be turning clockwise, blocking counterclockwise. There's a couple different washers that's going to come in the kit. Uh, this one takes the large one. There is a smaller one. Just depends on what you got. Alright, when that gets in the case, the sprags are going to go in with the shiny side down. Um, I think that's right. See, I marked it. It's been a while. No, shiny side up. And that's going to sit in there this way. Our planet's going to be on here. And that holds in the. When the planet's in there, the planet's going to turn clockwise, lock counterclockwise. We have a two tab washer. They're offset, so it only goes in one way. sure that you get it right and then this bearing is going to go with this side up I believe that was correct yeah and that sits in there okay we are at a standstill till the core gets here pretty much I mean we could do the servo but I think we'll just wait I think I'm gonna go ahead and change the o-rings and stuff there's nothing much to talk about here um, if you want to take it apart if the spring is broken you need to change it there's just a knee clip out here it comes off scarf cut on the uh, ceiling ring that goes in here you can put grease on it if you need to there's two o-rings on here and spring sits on here the snap ring that holds the cover in our wiring harness there's an o-ring our pinion um, plug there's an o-ring all right, I guess that's it until we get the core here. Okay, on the differential, we have the race that goes over here. Make sure your speedometer gear is not all screwed up. Pinion gears are okay. Your uh, ring gear is okay. If you do take your ring gear off, this line faces up. After you put your seals in, there is a oil slinger that goes in here. Big tab over here small tabs over there, your adjustment shim, and your race. Uh, you'd be putting silicone on here to seal that up. 12 millimeter bolts to hold that in. They have a B on them just like the pump, but they'll usually have Loctite on them. On the other there'll be a silicone on here again these are the bolts that hold that in uh, let's see on your pinion there's a thin lip that holds that ceiling ring on, I mean that spring on there 
So just get you some some thin grease and pack it in there like I did that. That'll help keep that from popping off. Go ahead and lube up your bearing and your race. Get that ready. You can lube up the outside of this. It'll help getting that in. Get your crush sleeve for your diff. It goes on here like that. Then there's a snap ring that holds that in the case. Then when we get to going into the case, this snap ring goes in, oil slinger, race, and our transfer gear. We're gonna wanna lube all this up again as well. Uh, let's see. I think we're getting ready to put this into the case. Yeah, hopefully that won't be in the way. And the snap ring. We want to make sure that we put the taper in the right way. If you look at your tips that have a taper to it, you want the shortest end of the taper up towards you. And I got these going the wrong direction. Got our crush sleeve on there. Put our other snap ring in, make sure the taper is going the same way. Come on. This one's pretty stout. And it's pretty wide, so. There we go. Our oil slinger, this side down. Our race. and our bearing put that in afterwards so we're okay
All right, let me look up the torque specs. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. I do not remember what they are. Okay, uh, 206 foot-pounds. The turning torque on this should be... What the heck was it? Eight point seven to thirteen point nine new bearings, four point three to six point nine inch pounds uh, old bearings. Stake your nut in place. O ring on here. Ten millimeter bolt holds that in. I think it's something like forty-three inch pounds. If you feel the need to torque this, I think just hand tight's good enough. Lube up the back of your case where your low reverse piston goes. Put your piston in. You want the opening of your snap ring away from the little raised areas there. Short end of the taper up again. See if I can keep from hitting the camera. seal is going to look like that. goes in this way. Just a little bit below flush. Okay, here's the shield that's on here that you got to turn to get when you got it in there. And it's sitting in there, it's sitting in there just like that. This little dent is right there locking it in. You got to turn this this way to get to the roll pin to drive it out. It's going to drive it out through there. You do not need this thing. It, that roll pin is not going to come out of there. So just throw this thing away.
We've got our uh, cork paw. It's going to go in this way. We have our pivot pin that goes through here. There's a hole in the case where one part of the spring goes and then there's a hole in here where this part goes. So get that all in there. The long end is going to face in to here. Actually, let's just flip this up. Let's see if I can show this. this piece sitting in there this piece out here This is going to sit in there just like that. Make sure it locks in there and then your shaft will not come out. that in flush this plate's going to sit on top three ten millimeters Make sure that your park mechanism works.
Okay, you have this rubber seal, goes in here. Put you some grease to hold it in. You got a flat seal like this, goes in there. Now I lay this on its side so it's easier for me to get it in there. This is how I do it. You can do it however you want. You can actually put this in afterwards if you want to. This pin goes in the hole right there. The worst part is going to be keeping this from falling out and then turning this to get everything lined up. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put gasket sealer on the gasket to keep it from moving. We'll see if we can do it without doing that. Well, my gasket moved on me. Okay, I'm gonna have to put the gasket sealer on it because it's just falling in between there. You got 12 millimeter bolts like this. And two like this go over here. And the other four go down here. All right, these are supposed to be 18 foot-pounds, 12 millimeters. All right, got your rear ring here. Got the bearing. The hub with the washer, I mean the planet with the washer. Okay, if you look on your steels, you have two singles. You want those down at the bottom.
pressure plate with this side up. Now the only thing they specify about on the snap ring is that you don't have the opening in one of these cutouts. I put it over here so it's fully supported. Sprague assembly. Want the shiny side up, this side down. Take my pictures. All right, turn your planetary and kind of push it in on your sprag at the same time. You're going to be turning clockwise. And get this thing to turn. I'm on that. Get me in that way. I am missing a snap ring. Oh, here it is. Do the same thing with this snap ring. Just make sure it's supported. You want this sprag with the washer on it facing down. Going to do the same thing with these, but the pressure plate is first, and you want this side down. Turn spring in. And put our center support in. We want the feed hole facing down. This little notch. This little bolt is going to sit right inside there. You can put your other bracket on there if you want to right now. I don't. I just screw this in there enough that my center support will line up. Don't put it all the way in because you don't want to grab it and bend it. All right, snap ring is the same. Uh, this one I put in here so that it's supported here and here. This 
a little bit difficult because I'm trying to keep it where the camera can see it. And hopefully I won't hit it. Normally I got this back by me where I can see it all. like we're all the way in there and our sun shell with our washer on it front plant it with bearing on both sides hub with our erase Now you're going to want to put your band in. Your ply pin needs to go through this hole and through the band. Sure your bearing is in there. Your two drums and this bearing assembly up here. Lube your case and your pump o-ring. your washers on your pump and your ceiling rings are not pooching out too far all right you want this right there the 12 millimeter bolts with the B on them Your end play is 10 to 35 thousandths. This tip needs to be in that hole. This part needs to be around the band. A lot of times I'll just go ahead and put the servo in and make sure my band lined up because it just makes putting this in a pain oh, wrong bracket you want this bracket here a little lip up
I'll make sure that you can screw that in by hand all the way down. If you can't, that means your support's not lined up. And if you just go putting that bolt in, it's gonna bend it. Put your servo in. Make sure it does grab your band. Okay, make sure you got the right o-rings on your accumulators there's a single o-ring in there i mean spring in there there's a single spring in the front double spring here bracket it's going to sit let's see how did it go it's going to go on here so we need to leave these three bolts out Got our tube seal. Flat seal. O-ring on our wiring harness. Okay, I forgot all about the throttle cable up to this point. Let me go see if the one that came on this core is better than the one that we got. If not, we'll go through the repair on that. All right, our cable is gonna be okay. This retainer goes in this slot right here. 10 millimeter bolt, O-ring on your cable. Okay, you guys get your cable. The 
this cable end through this hole and then the cable needs to run through the cam. too far. Get this all straightened out. We got one, two, three, four, four bolts that are inch six thirty six. This one's the same. And I believe this one's the same. Close enough. This one down here. It's an inch 84. We have three at our two inch 260 two that are one inch 400. Two inch one twelve that's a filter bolt. And this one down here takes a bracket. And this one is one inch nine oh eight. Okay, we got our tubes. This one goes down here. And this one has the bracket on it. And this tube goes up here. And this bolt goes on that. <clears throat> we got 
got this short bolt it goes on there and this stiffener this part holds the bracket or the tube in the bent part goes towards the front No. 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 Shit. What are you using? Take them. Just another one over there. I don't think one showed up. That's the bad one. Well, this is the bad or one. that's the old one. Isn't it? goes in there just like that. Oh. Alright, then we got our bracket for our tubes. Okay. Plug our solenoid in. Make sure your gaskets on your filter. The filter bolts are two inch, two hundred and seventy three thousandths. Body bolts are eight foot pounds. Pan gasket, pan, make sure your magnets are out of the way. Make sure that when you put this down, it sits all the way flat. If not, it'll crack those magnets and send that crap through your tranny. These are your pan bolts. I believe they were uh, 43 inch pounds. Neutral switch, like we talked about, lines up on there in neutral.
get to tighten up your 7 8 All right, we lost the battery. So I just called it a day. Yeah, we'll see how much we can get done before we have to turn that fan on. Put your O-ring on your filler tube. for that. Um, I didn't film this. <clears throat> there is a snap ring right here to take out and make sure that's in there properly. Was not, was going to fly out. Alright, there's a snap ring here and on the cover here is an O-ring. There's an o-ring here and it's just a plastic capsule spring and a ball inside there make sure that this is in there properly And make sure we get this in there properly. Like I said, normally don't take any of that out of there. It's a bracket and a 10 millimeter. Uh, 17 on the uh, fittings. And it's a very tight 17. Okay, make sure we're not forgetting anything here. I'm trying to keep the 
just from getting broke. Yeah, we have a gasket here. Our cover. Make sure your vent is free. 10 millimeters. Fourteen millimeter with the stud. Speed sensor has a twelve millimeter and an O-ring on it. I believe it was uh, 48 inch pounds on these bolts here or no actually I think it did not specify on these bolts that's right it did not because that was these should be probably around 48 but I was wondering what this one would be in it uh, did not say it anywhere Okay. Right in here takes another flat seal. Use a good grade of silicone on this. This is what I use, Loctite 598. I think we've already talked about it. Uh, race, shim, plastic uh, washer. Get your seals in. Differential with our other race
and see if we can get this on camera. The two longest bolts go right here and directly below that. The next two longest bolts go the second one down and directly below that and then the other ones are all the same. Okay. This faces up. It may help to uh, leave the housing a little loose to get that in those in there. pick up on the differential a little bit to get everything kind of lined up. This housing goes this way. Okay, these bolts over right here are the longer ones. The stud goes right here on the second one down. These are for the other housing. Nine foot pounds on the fourteens. I 
um, 14 foot pounds on the 12s over here. for music yet. <coughs> May have to cut that portion out. speed sensor over in here 10 millimeter for that our cover and the two twelves for that goes right there and uh, we're done with this unit. Okay, on the neutral switch, you got Phillips head screws that you got to take out. Clean all the junk that's in here out of there. Uh, gasket goes on here. It's probably going to swell up. If it does, just cut it in a corner and wherever it's extra, measure that over, cut it, put a little dab of silicone if need be. Go ahead and get a little bit of very fine sandpaper. Polish this up. Polish up your contacts on the edges here. There's a spring underneath each contact. It may be wise if it doesn't spring up very well to stretch those just a little bit. You have to be careful with them. This one pushed up quite a bit, so I think we're gonna be just fine. contacts in okay get you some dielectric grease and squeeze some into there be generous with it you're gonna want to get quite a bit right up in here It'll help seal that just a little bit. Put some on this side.
and get this all together. Put your bolts back in. Make sure I am going from the correct side. And no, I'm not. Go from this side. Okay, um, I'll put the rest of these in in a minute. There's a couple ways to line your neutral switch back up. If it hasn't been taken off a bunch of times, you can put this washer right back where it was, and that should be lined up. If you have this plate still on there, I'm going to want to line your plate up that line right there in neutral. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. This is going to make sure. Alright, I got this on the wrong side. I'll put this over here. Just like so. Maybe like so. See how far it turns. Yeah, we want it right there. You put your nut back on, there's a recessed side. You want that facing down. Don't tighten this all the way down yet. It makes this easier to get in there. But we're going to want to, let's see if we can get this turned back. In neutral, we want that lined up right there. speed sensor really not much need to take any of this apart you do need to change that o-ring in here is a washer and out here is a cap a little lip faces up and that's all got to line up with the um, slot on here see those slots right there sits on top might be actually easier to put it on here first Gotta line up on that slot. I'll go back down there. Just like that. I don't think that spring got in the picture. Okay, so put your O-ring on, on here, you got flats and the little ledge faces this way because it's going to be sitting on top. These have to line up just like so. The spring goes in. Seal. And then uh, the electrical connector. And three Phillips bolts hold that on.
speedometer gear goes in. That clip is going to be holding on to right here. Just turn it until it will go in. And it is going to be difficult. All right, I'm gonna have to take that back apart, find out why it does not want to go, but then the clip goes in, just like, let's see, just like so. Okay, this is getting added in here because this actually came up in the question on the disassembly, and I don't normally, deal with the installations but it's going to be the best way to do this this bolt hole right here when you're installing it back in needs to have thread sealer put on it and these two holes right here you need to fill them up with some kind of sealant and make sure that they don't uh, it doesn't extend past the surface if you're going to put like JB Weld or something like that in there personally I would just put a good grade of silicone but uh, plug those two holes up thread sealant on that one that uh, will cause it to look like it's leaking out the front